Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 144, TidyX or screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name's Ellis Hughes. And my name's Patrick Ward. Thanks for checking out TidyX. And as always, if you love what we're doing, like and subscribe on that YouTube channel. It really helps us out. And you can also help yourself out by dropping questions and comments down below. And maybe some of your questions or comments will make it into an upcoming episode like the one we have today. Additionally, if you love what we're doing, we love doing it, and you want to support us, uh, we do have a Patreon page. We're super appreciative of anything that you might like to donate to the show. And with that, we're jumping into episode 144. We're talking about nested for loops for simulation. This was a question that I got from a colleague who was building some simulations of models um, and then applying some or sim simulations of data rather, and then applying some models to that data to get the outputs. And this is a pretty common thing uh, in research that you might do if you're trying to perhaps show the value of the methodology for your study to get grant funding, or maybe even something like pre-registration where you're going to show how the model and the data is going to work. And um, you're trying to get pre-registration or put publish pre-registration, which is a pretty common component right now of the whole open science movement. And it's a great thing. So uh, in looking at what he had sent through, we are going to um, take that concept and we're going to show how you can use nested for loops to simulate data, test your models, store the output, and then do that all over again, n number of times, however many number of times that you want to do. I'll jump into just talking a little bit about what we've got here. We're going to load Tidyverse because, as always, we love Tidyverse. Um, we're going to just make a, this totally fake and you know pretty simple data set. It's just three variables, all R norm, nothing fancy. And, Not realistic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, totally unrealistic data, but that's fine. Um, then we're going to store the models. So let's pretend that we have three models that we want to run on our data. Uh, model one model two and model three, we can see these are all simple linear regression models, just single variable models. And we store them in a vector. And because they're formulas, we have to put the quotations around them so that they get stored appropriately. The other way to do this is you could actually use the formula function and yep. just give and it, uh, yep, just like that, uh, which is totally fine. But you know, with the quotes around it, it's a little bit more readable. It looks a little cleaner. So we're going to more uh, fun to, to work with. It's you don't then have to deal with yeah. the baggage that comes with it being a formula object, uh, especially because the only re only way we're actually going to be using this is to drop into our linear models later on. So we're not yeah. actually needing to do anything with it as a formula. So it's a little bit easier to just leave it as is is, is yeah. this uh, character vector. And then you obviously can add to it if you want, like for Whatever. three there. Yeah, for but three. It, it makes yeah. it very, very readable. Yeah, totally. And so the way that it works is now we have this vector of formulas, which you could see right there. Um, and, and just like Ellis said, like we don't want to deal with the whole formula component. We just want to like really call these from the actual position that they are in the vector. So this is what it looks like. So like we just pass all model, and we have our data is dat, and we you can see we just get linear regression models um, for each three each of those three lines, and it's super easy. You could store them, and uh, that's just to show you that this is how we're going to use this uh, within the actual nested for loop. Yeah, just wanted to show um, kind of what it yeah, looked like. So go. see, it, it did properly pull out var one and var two, which is what we expected yeah. there. And then with this guy, da da. So what is the actual model there var one and var three so like we yeah. are actually applying these models in in the lm here so with that said that's basically the setup we're going to get into the for loop here we want to run this n number of times in order to not make this go too long we're going to just run our simulation 10 times and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be simulating a data set just like the one that we did above we're going to drop all those models in and get the results out. And then we're going to do that again. And we're going to go through that sequence 10 times. And we're just going to create these simple little lists. And we've done this a ton of times. We like to store variables in lists. We're going to create some just some storage vessels for the outputs. And these are just lists where we're going to drop the results in. And now we get into our for loop. I'll talk about the little outside part. And then Ellis will go through the inside part. So it's a nested for loop. And like I said, the first thing that we have to do 
is exactly what we did above, which is for every I in one to N sim. So we're going to do this 10 times. We're going to simulate a data set. But before we simulate another data set, we're going to take that data set and we're going to drop it into this nested for loop that looks and that builds our models. In order to store the results of this nested for loop, we also create on line 50, a new list to store those results. So once we've simulated a data set, we created a, an empty um, vector to store these results of a, a list to store these results. We get ready for a second for loop. Ellis, what's going on in the second for loop? All right, let's go to it. Yeah, so we've already created this data set. We've got this output list object that's empty. Now we're going to seek along all the models that we've defined earlier to then apply all of them. So we use the seek along as we talked about last week. Now this is the safest way to be able to uh, set up your for loop and we're going to call that J. So for seek along J, that's going to be one, two or three. And then we're going to fit that linear model. So just as we did up here in lines 23, 24, and 25, we're going to use J as one in this situation. Uh, all models pull out the first model, call the LM on dat sim, and save that to fit. But we don't actually want to save the fit model. What we want to save are the results from it. You, of course, could save your fit, drop that into an L, uh, a list, and move on with your life. But we wanted to, we had some specific things we wanted to be pulling out from them. So we're going to create a data frame of the results. So first we're going to store which model we used. Uh, so we're going to pull all models uh, J, just as we did up here. Next, we're going to say, okay, what is the intercept that we got from this fit? So we're going to from fit, pull co F and pull the first entry in there, which is our Y intercept from a linear model. Next, we're going to pull out the slope. And so we're going to go fit co F the second argument or entry in COF. And we're actually going to pull out what are the fitted values that we got based on DATSIM? Uh, what are the results that we would get from this fitted model? So we're going to go fit dollar sign fit to pull that out. I wanted to save also which simulation we use so that we have a record of that in, in our uh, data set that we create, as well as we need to define the row names for our data frame because all models fit COF, um, first entry, fit co second entry, and I are all, all only vectors of length one. And, but fit dollar sign fit is actually a vector of length that matches dat sim, which is yeah. 10. So they're and going to be different lengths. So fit, data frame. Yeah, fit, fit is just a, um, those are just the model predictions on the in sample data. So we're just pulling out those predictions from the fitted model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because they're of different lengths, these these entries all need to be of length one, and they'll just get recycled to fill out the data frame. But it needs to know what are what are the row names that I should be calling uh, in this data frame because it doesn't really know what to do. So we're going to give it some unique information here. So sim, which simulation number, model, which model number, and then an index from one to ten of the. Uh, from, from the fit there. And we're going to store that in output list in entry J, which is going to be one, two, or three. And we're going to save that out. And then that is our internal for loop. Uh, once that is completed, now we've simulated all three models on the simulated data. We're going to take that list and rather than trying to deal with it right now, what we're going to do is we're going to just drop it immediately into sim fitted uh, values, which is also a list. So list can hold lists. So that's that's the ben that's the tool that we're going to be using there, dropping that into simulation entry I, and then we're also going to store the data set that was generated for this uh, simulation there. And so now we can run this all of this code here, and it'll run real quick. It's already done <laughs> because there's not much to a linear model. Of course, if your data simulation step takes a while, and then the model fitting step takes a while. This will compound, so maybe think about ways that you can try to reduce um, having to rerun things or try to find areas where you can, I don't know, be, maybe try to be more memory efficient. I don't know. It all depends on your specific situation. If you have a specific uh, question about a uh, type of model that you're trying to apply, leave a comment down below and uh, with some information or send us an email and we can definitely take a look at it. Mm -hmm. and it might become an episode. 
So with that, we now have run these two for nested for loops and we have our sim fitted values here. So we have a list of that is of length 10 and inside of each entry, we have lists of length three. And inside of each of those entries is this data frame of, mm -hmm. for example, this one is the sixth simulation, the first model, and th these are the results. We also have the simulated data sets all living here. So we can always go back and go, wait, how did, how did this fit? I wanna, I wanna investigate that a little bit more. And we can always recover that information. So what else can we do with this, Patrick? Yeah, so we can, um, of course, if we don't wanna work with lists, we can smash it together and use bind rows. So if we bind rows, we just get a massive data frame. So this is maybe um, valuable for the researcher who says, okay, now I've simulated all this data. I've simulated all these models. I need to maybe start to plot the relationship of the um, slope variables and their standard errors across all the simulations, because maybe I want to, um, uh, you know, uh, get an idea of the effect size that that might happen in the research that we're going to do, or how how it looks relative to the fitted values, or even we can take our actual data set, which is our da simulated data sets, which we have here, and again, those are in list notation. But what we want to do is if you if you go to the console and you scroll up, you can see that each of the list has a um, has a, a number to it. We want to make sure we preserve that because those numbers are specific to the simulation. And so if we wanted to do some plotting of our coefficients relative to the actual simulated data, we're going to need to do some joins. And we want to make sure that we're joining on the right um, simulations for those coefficients. So the first thing we do is we run uh, seek along sim data sets, and that just gives us the uh, the names of the actual uh, list elements. And in this case, they're not names, they're just numbered because we didn't name them. Um, then we're going to use map. This would map, which... work with names. Yep, yeah, same thing, yeah. Boom. In oh. this case, they are not actually named, so. Oh, they're not numbers. names, yeah, they're not, uh, yeah, that's right. So <clears throat> then we'll use the map function. So in, within map, we're going to pass it a function that's going to run over that seek along sims data sets because we're pump, uh, uh, piped into that. So, yep. So the function is going to take an argument X and that X is, remember, sim data sets is a list. So we have bracket, bracket, list. We're going to pull out um, whichever list element we're looking at within that seek along. And then we're going to say, hey, mutate the sim number X. So actually then grab that seek, uh, that seek along number and drop it into its own column. And when we do the bind rows trick there, uh, so that that's this is what it looks like in the list. And when we when we do the bind right. rows, yep, there you go. So, it, so this it actually is a, you know sanity, sanity check, right? To like yeah, created a variable yeah, that matches that cool. And so now when we hit bind rows, we get our data set returned. We have a sim number column that we can then left join to our coefficients or a fitted data. We can plot the fitted data relative to the actual observations in the simulation. We can plot coefficients and their standard errors. We can plot um, all the different simulations of the coefficients. We have lots of options for reporting this data, but that is a simple way of using nested for loops to simulate data and simulate models over that data. Um, just keep in mind, models can be as complex as you want. We created some relatively simple models. And also keep in mind, if you use a different type of model, in this case, we used LM, and, and in our output list, we called the function, the, the features of that LM model so that we could get what we wanted back. If you use a different type of model, like a, a like a random forest or a trees model or something like that, you're going to need to know which elements within that stored model are callable. And you might have to change things. Uh, so the names function works really well here. Like if you have a, if you have a model that you call fit, if you do names and you put the parentheses over it, it's going to tell you where different elements of that model are stored. And so you might have to play around with this to get the things that you need. Um, like we used fit, which is short for fitted values. Um, the broom package is another package, which is really nice 
Uh, so if it's a broom and then dot dot tidy is the function. I, I, I don't use it. This going, isn't my world. Yeah, yeah. I know this, it exists. This but. is my world. <laughs> and so within the uh, within the tidy function, now you can call and get um, very simple in a data frame type of manner, a very simple way of looking at the model outputs. Because if you do just summary fit, you're going to get the base R output, which is uh, useful uh, and, and has a lot of information, but it's a bit harder to work with and manipulate. So, yep. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> So That's with awesome. that, that is how you could use nested for loops as well as a little uh, little extra talking about how to do uh, some modeling and how to deal with those uh, fun modeling objects. As always, thank you for joining us for 144 episodes of TidyX. My name is Ellis Hughes, and you can find me on various social media sites at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. I'm on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick at tidy underscore explained is where the screencast lives on twitter tidy.explained at gmail.com is where you can email us but the easiest way to hit us up is youtube like and subscribe comments down below questions down below might become part of a future episode which is always fun uh, and we appreciate the questions that we have been getting and finally if you like our work and you feel like it's had a positive impact on your work we do have a patreon page we're super appreciative of anything that you would uh, be willing to donate to the show. All right. Thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world.